All right, here we go, pottery people. Final countdown of our three-part video over basics of throwing. Nothing too complicated or, or challenging, but just the basics. So what I've got here is <clears throat> just my, my pulled cylinder. So I, I did my centering and I opened it and I did my walls, but it's a, not got a, it, it doesn't have a lot of flair as of right now. So I'm gonna show you a couple things that you can try playing around with to give a little bit more shape and form and uh, refinement to your pot after you get to this point. So the first thing, and this is just kind of a personal preference. If you like throwing rings, more power to you, keep them in there. But I like to use my metal rib to smooth out the surface. So what I will do is I'm gonna put my hand, my left hand in, and I'm gonna use my metal rib on the exterior, and it's gonna really smooth out the surface. So I'll show you what that looks like. And I'm just gonna be really gently pushing the wall into the rib. So this is kind of a finesse step that takes some finesse to do. You definitely don't wanna push your pot too hard into that rib, because then you'll gouge it and all kinds of bad things can happen, but well, nothing too bad. You know, if, you, if your pot flies off the wheel, it's still not the end of the world. So I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out. And if you prefer a wooden rib for that, or like one of these flexible ribs, that's perfectly fine too. I know I'm a weirdo, I like the metal one. People always say the metal one's trash, but I actually use the metal one all the time, I like it. It can cut you, so it's kind of vicious sometimes that way, but it makes a really nice smooth surface. Okay, next I will show you how you can flare the pot out or make a more narrow point on the pot. That's called collaring. Okay, so to flare this pot out a little bit, I'm gonna use my left hand on the inside. If you're a righty, this might feel a little weird when you first start doing it. But the reason why I'm having to use my left is because after you center over here, you need to stay at four o'clock the rest of the time throughout the process. So sometimes I'll see people going like this and because they feel more more comfortable with their dominant hand doing the work. But the thing is, this way, the clay is going out and away from me. So it's not gonna cause friction and jam up my fingers and cause me to dent the pot. When I'm over here, it's pushing against my fingers. So here, I can work with it a lot easier because it's going out and away from me. And that's all determined on what is your dominant hand and, and is your wheel going the correct direction. If you were a left-handed person, my, your wheel would be going clockwise and you would be over here. Okay, so four o'clock for righties, eight o'clock for lefties. <laughs> it's gonna make your life a lot easier to make sure you got that all correct. Okay, enough blabbering about it. So I'm gonna just start to push to give this pot a little shape. And I'm just kind of pushing really almost right up against the floor to kind of pooch it out a little bit on the bottom. It's kind of fun. And you know, you can go as far or as, as um, little with this as you want. Some clays, and I'm just refining the bottom a little bit right now, you guys, with my right hand. Some clays are more stretchy and will be more amicable to this, and then others are a little bit more stiff, so that's a consideration as well. I'm using porcelain, so I can push it pretty far. It's pretty nice and stretchy. But I think I'll stop there for this one. So now I'm gonna kind of do the reverse and collar it in so that I make that curve even a little bit more dramatic and give the pot sort of like a waist, if you will. Give it a little spray. Sorry, just sprayed Daniela. <laughs> so here, it's like I said, the opposite. So we're gonna put pressure from the outside. And this is just a little bit different though because we're gonna use both hands and you wanna really hug your hands around where you are putting pressure and just slowly move up the pot. Or if you're being really targeted and where you want your collaring, you could just kind of squeeze and then release. Either way is fine. And from here, you can just kind of play a little bit with the shape. And sort of just have fun with it, giving it a little bit more volume and air in the places where you want. All right, so we're almost wrapped up here. Last but not least, 
I'm gonna dry out the bottom of my pot because each time that I've dipped my hands in the water, given it a little spray, it's kind of accumulated down there in the bottom. And that can sort of disintegrate the clay that's down there in the bottom and weaken the floor. So you wanna always dry that out a little bit. You can make a sponge on a stick too. If you have a tall, narrow piece, you can just take a dowel rod and kind of rubber band a sponge to the end of it if you can't fit your hands down in there. So for one finishing touch before we do our very basic um, little trimming step that we're gonna do is I'm gonna use a chamois. And you got, and friends, I use a, like a like a, an actual leather chamois. I know there are synthetic ones out there, but for this purpose, they don't, well, I have found, I don't, they don't do the job as well as a real one. But you know, you can also even just use a damp piece of like plastic from a grocery bag for this. It doesn't really have to be like all the fancy stuff. So whatever you have is fine. So I'm just gonna use this to round the lip so that it's not so angular and sharp. Okay, that's it. It's really light pressure. I'm just kind of almost letting the chamois rest and wrapping it around and letting it do the work for me. And it is, it's pretty saturated. Okay, so don't, if your chamois dry, it's gonna catch. So make sure you get it pretty damp. And friends, that does it for our um, shaping and finishing piece. So now we will move over to trimming and then that's gonna wrap us up. Okay, friends, finishing up, we're just gonna take away, trim away a little of this excess down here that, we, that we've needed to hold, give us a little more stability and, and stick to the bat. But now we wanna get rid of it so that we can kind of continue this curve that we've got going on the pot. So we're just gonna remove that little bit of extra that's down there. And that's all the trimming we're gonna do on this for today. Um, again, we will circle back to some more complex trimming processes, but for today, I'm gonna show you an easy one that, that still looks pretty good, so or, or really good. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold my tool real steady. I've got my non-dominant hand for support again, as you can see. And what you want to do here to, to get a good clean cut is kind of hold your tool and let it dig in and then slowly move down. And I'm going at a little bit of an angle here to get, again, sort of reflect the curve that's going on up here. Kind of try to get it to um, follow through on the bottom. And you can see I kind of leaned my tool down and that pressed that excess away from the pot so now I can get it get it away without mucking up the bottom of my pot. So big finale, my friends. We're going to run the needle tool under that ring of excess that we cut off. Make sure you can see that it's that it's completely released and then you just cut and remove. And it really adds some refinement to the silhouette of your pot. And if you can get that moved down, it, it's just so helpful. And you know, on a piece like this, I wouldn't even do any more trimming. I think it's fine just where it is. Maybe a little clean up with the sponge if you need it, but that's our basic, basic trimming technique. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. And if you have questions or comments, drop them below and we'll see you next time.